Hello, this is the Watchdog, and welcome back to Fun with Watches. If watches weren't fun, you'd only need one. Today, we're going to review the Glycine GL0416 Combat Sub. Let's start off with the wrist check. I'm wearing the last of my Pagani Design Pagani Party watches, the PD1780. And Greg was wearing my Addy's Dive 2034. Grogo said that Trailer Sith announced that if you don't vote for Valerum for Chancellor and Princess Leia gets elected, she's going to leave and move somewhere far away. I said my galaxy is far, far away, so at least she's not coming here. Alright, let's take a look at the watch. It comes in this real big box here. It's got the Glycine name and logo. And it says since 1914. Yes, that's how long Glycine's been around. And here is the watch. Get it off of this pillow. This is a really nice box. And here is the watch, the GL0416. The reference number is per colorway. So this is the only color in the GL0416, but there are lots of other combat subs with different reference numbers and different colors and looks and styles. I wanted to point out, it came with a signed warranty card, but if you look at the date on it, I bought the watch in January 2024, but the date says January 2023. So I'm assuming that this means that this when this watch got dumped to the gray market, it was already signed. And so it's been sitting on the Astra sh shelves for about a year. So you can't count on getting a signed warranty card of the full two years if you buy it from ashford that's just the reality of it of course like anything do you really need the the full-blown warranty you, if you buy the watch if it's broken ashford will take care of you and if it's not broken if it's in good working order it's going to last a couple years it's it's a reliable movement and a reliable watch from a reliable com company This is the first Glycine on my channel. Glycine is an established Swiss brand with an accomplished history. Glycine is credited with the first automatic watch and the first 24-hour GMT hand watch. In 2016, Glycine was bought by Invicta. For all of you Invicta haters, Glycine would have gone bankrupt and closed their doors without Invicta's involvement. Invicta promised to lay off the watch manufacturing as long as they could help with the sales and marketing. Invicta is all about volume, and these glycines have been dumped all over the gray market with ridiculously low prices for what you're getting. Glycine's claim to fame is their Airman Pilot's watch, but since this was half the money and I still have to buy my own watches, I chose the Combat Sub instead. This is a 200 meter driver that is not ISO 6425 certified, and thus you don't see the word divers with an apostrophe S. This is a Swiss made watch, although I watched a recent video from Mark from Island Watch showing that can be quite a loose standard. However, this combat sub seems to be very well made and possibly really twice the quality one would expect for the price I paid. This combat sub comes in way too many colorways, dial variations, and strap options to give you a list or screenshot of all the models. You can even get quartz models if you want to save more money and don't want to set your watch more than just at daylight savings. Let's just say that it's safe to say you are bound to find at least one that will please you. I chose the one I did because it was blue and I liked the Explorer style major indices as well as the Fotina hands and markers. The watch is 42.6 millimeters at the bezel, which barely overhangs the case. So I'm assuming the case is 42 millimeters then. It's 50.3 millimeters lug to lug, but it has inverted end links and they kind of go in a little bit. So the lug to lug is really a little bit shorter. And it's 10.7 millimeters thick, which is amazing for a 200 meter dive watch automatic. It's just incredible that it's under 11 millimeters. Has a 22 millimeter lug width and weighs 162 grams on the supply steel bracelet with two links removed. So it's not that heavy. The bezel is a 60 click unidirectional with a aluminum insert. The action is really nice. The clicks are really solid. 
and there's not too much resistance but it's not too light either you're never going to knock it out of place accidentally and there's absolutely no back play at all so yeah you don't really hear the clicks very well so if you like to hear that loud clicky noise this does not make a loud noise but the clicks feel really good then also if you look at the top of the bezel you have this little home notch here or so protrusion here and it makes it a little nice you get a little bit more grip there but yeah i really like the bezel and then we have the dial the dial has a texture to it and it's flat and no sunburst effect then we have the glycine name and logo up top and this is not the low the controversial logo where they got sued because they said it looked too much like another logo this is the old crown uh, some of the combat subs that they're selling on ashford do have that uh, newer logo so they must be discontinued then on the bottom it says combat automatic and then it says sub 20 atm it's really hard to read the sub 20 atm though because of the red on the blue background and i won't do any games and do any contrast enhancements because yeah it's hard to see in the camera and it's hard to see in real life too then we have the indices and they look like they're just uh, painted on loom and we have a three six and nine at the majors kind of explorer looking like and we have batons everywhere else and a huge triangle up top. And then we have a date at the four. That's unusual to have a date at the four. And if you look at the date wheel too, the date wheel has, it's so it's straight up and down at the four too. It's not tilted at an angle. So that's kind of nice. But for some odd reason, they used a red on black date. So it's really hard to read the date. So if they would have just used that same Fotina color that they're using for everything else on the date, I think that would have been much nicer and much easier to read. They already have the red loom triangle and they already have the red uh, depth rating. So I think uh, that's enough red. It would have looked a lot better with the same color as the indices. Then we have the hands, we have a fence post minute hand, and we have a hour hand that's not a Mercedes. It's got the same shape as Mercedes, but you don't have that center, the, the lines in the center there. And then we have the second hand, and instead of a lollipop, we have more of a chiclet. I don't know if you guys remember chiclets or not. That's what they, they used to be the only gum that came in a, shape like that now now lots of gum comes in that shape then we have a sign screw down crown and the uh, thread action's good and it pops nicely and this crown helps with the 200 meters water resistance and yes a lot of watches in this prestige would have 300 meters but i don't think it's possible to make a 300 meter watch this thin and 200s that's a you don't need more than 200 really and then when you go to screw it back down the threads catch right away and uh, there's not too much resistance and once you screw it down it feels like it's going to stay no big deal there it's a good crown and it's big enough some crowns are too small but this one you can get a good grip and then we do have crown guards that actually protect the crown they're, they're not just a little pedestal for the crown of course this is a 42 millimeter watch it really doesn't need a pedestal and then we have the crystal the crystal is amazing look at that sapphire you can hardly see any reflection at all it hardly looks like there's even a crystal on it. And this is some of the best AR coated crystal I've seen. It's, I would say just as good as my Tag Heuer, which cost a lot more than this glycine. And then we have the case. Wow, 
Look how thin that is. It's just amazing that they are able to stuff it automatic in a case like this and still keep 200 meters water resistance. It's fully brushed. And it's nice. And the lugs turned down. So that help, helps this bigger watch fit smaller wrist. But yeah, I really like this case a lot. I think they did a great job. Then we have the case back, and thankfully it's not a coin edge. It's got the notches for the wrench. And then it says glycine GL0416. Then it says stainless steel automatic sapphire crystal. And then it gives the water resistance 20 ATM. And then we, it looks like we have two sea lions uh, next to the glycine name and logo. And then it says combat. And then it has a little trident in the middle. It's a nice looking case back. Underneath the case back is the Swiss made GL224 movement. This is basically a rebranded Celita SW200 movement. And I'm sure they used to be rebranded ETA 2824 movements, but ETA seems to only sell movements to the swatch group anymore so it's a lot harder to get edits that's why salidas have become so popular this is a 26 joule movement that's a four hertz meaning it ticks eight times a second that's why you see such a smooth sweep and it has a bi-directional rotor and it hand winds and hacks and they're usually fairly accurate. This is basically the go-to movement on any Swiss watch. Three-hand or automatic, you're going to get under $1,000, that's for sure. In fact, it's the same movement in my more expensive Tag Heuer, which costs more than $2,000, which is about a $3,000 watch. So it's a good movement, and I'll put it on the time grapher, and I'll show you. Here it is on the time grapher, and I guess it just never fell. So when I tested it yesterday, it was running three seconds fast, and now it's running 10 seconds fast. <laughs> I don't understand. But anyway, 10 seconds is not horrible. It's just not as good as three seconds. But uh, look at that amplitude, plenty of amplitude, and there's only just a little bit of beat error. And at least it's running fast and not slow because with the fast hacking movement you can just hack it and wait for time to catch up where a slow movement you actually have to move the hands so that's why when you see like cost certification they always give you more tolerance fast than they do slow but it seems to be fairly consistent there and once again, it was running three seconds yesterday. <laughs> the bracelet is a three link with solid end links and is not fully articulating. The center links are fixed with the side links. And we do have push pin adjusters and not screw pins. And some people might complain that a premium watch should have screw pins because screw pins are more of a premium feature. Personally, I'm perfectly happy with push pins because I never have to worry about them coming out of me. Then I don't have to mess with Loctite or anything like that. Because usually on a more expensive Swiss watch, if it does have screw pins, they will put Loctite on it to make sure they don't come out. And then you have to heat up the bracelet to unscrew them. So I'm glad with the push pins. And they came out nice and easy. I didn't have to struggle. And then you also see that the bracelet's fully brushed. And I think that works better than polished centers because I think it just makes it look more like a tool watch, which is the aesthetic they're going for here. And then we have the clasp. The clasp is probably the, the biggest disappointment of the bracelet. It works fine and it's got a milled lower, pressed upper. And it has four holes of micro adjust, so that's plenty of holes of micro adjust. And it is signed. It's, it's just kind of boring. So I don't know if you're a huge fan. If 
if having a signed clasp is important to you, there's no big deal to keep it. It works just fine. But if not having a signed clasp is no big deal, then you might want to just order yourself a new clasp and you'll need a 20 millimeter. And then you can get a clasp with on the fly adjustment. And there is no diver's extension or anything like that. Here's the watch and my seven and a half inch wrist. That looks really nice. I really like it. Wears nice and flat. I like how the lugs turn down. And I just love how you can hardly tell that there's a, even a crystal on it. It's a really good watch. I only removed two links, but I did push it in two holes of micro adjust. So that's really about two and a half links. So if your wrist is bigger than eight, though, you might have difficulty. Well, maybe eight and a quarter, and you'll need some more links then. And I don't know if Ashford would supply more links, but I'm assuming there's you could get some links somewhere. But I really like the wearability of this watch, and it just looks great. Here we are in the loom room. Since this is my first glycine, I didn't know what to expect. But just wearing this watch, I had some pretty high hopes. So let's see how it pans out. As we speed up the time, we see the bright blue glow of BGW9. And it looks like it has some serious legs, as it is only fading very slowly. And thankfully, the hands are doing a little bit better than the indices. But look at that loom pip. It hasn't hardly faded at all and just keeps on glowing. This is indeed excellent loom. I'm very happy with it. What do I like about this watch? Well, I really like the 60 click bezel. It has solid bezel action with no back play. I love this AR coated sapphire crystal. You can hardly see any reflection at all. You can hardly tell the crystals even there. I love the fact you're getting an automatic diver that's thinner than 11 millimeters. What are my gripes and groans? Red on black date wheel makes the date hard to read. Some on the fly adjustment in the class would have been nice. And I only removed two links. So it should, should have a longer bracelet. Do I recommend this watch? Of course. This watch is awesome and is easily worth twice as much as what I paid for. It has stunning looks and wearability and it's hard to believe an automatic watch can be this thin. And there are so many variations that you're bound to find one that you like. Well, thank you for watching my review of the Glycine GL0416 Combat Sub. And I will be back with another review. Be sure and like and subscribe to my channel. I will leave a link for this watch to the Ashford site where I bought it from, but I do not have an affiliate with them. So if you want to buy this watch from them, that's just great. And if you want to buy it from somewhere else, that's just great too. But I will leave the link for convenience. Bye.